heaven and I asked about you and then I started to search heaven but I didn't I didn't see you then I saw She hadn't, she hadn't seen you. I dreamt I saw Father, and I asked about you. And then we started to search heaven, but we didn't, we didn't see you. Greetings, the Living Church of God. We want to thank God so much. He has given us yet another time to discuss and to learn from His Word. I'm Pastor Gate, and with me here is Pastor Piri. Pastor Piri, greet the viewers. Thank you so much, Pastor Gate. Greetings once again. Yes, it's been a blessed week, and it's been a good week. And finally, we have come to the end of the week. Sure, thank God so much. Before we start our discussion this afternoon, Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for who you are in our lives. As we are about to get into your word, may your spirit lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we had um, a powerful week together discussing on the topic. Gathered for worship sure. and scattered for service. Scattered for service. Yes. Now when we gather, we are gathered for one reason. That is to wash. To worship, yes, yes. And when I scattered, we are going there to serve. Okay. Uh, this afternoon, we want to discuss um, on the concept of um, seeing Jesus from the perspective of um, the wise men from yes. the East. Okay. They came to Jerusalem and they said, uh, "We have seen the star. The star. Yes. We have seen the star yes. that represented him." Okay. Now we are going to read uh, from uh, Matthew chapter two. Verse 1 uh, and, um, and verse 2. Yes. Um, I'll read in your hearing. <clears throat> now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship, to worship him. him. Yes. Now, my pastor, Yes. We are given this narrative um, of uh, the wise men. The wise men, yes. They're coming from the east. Okay. Um, they came following Esther. Esther. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to believe this star was a different star altogether. Okay. So they followed this star mm -hmm. up until they saw Jesus. They saw Jesus, yes. And um, this gave me this idea that um, uh, following signs should lead us to Jesus. 
Exactly. At the end of the day, they followed their sign, and that was the star. Yes. It led them to the feet of Jesus. To the feet of Jesus. Yes. What do you understand by this concept? Um, the wise men coming, saying, "We have seen his star." Okay. Thank you so much, my pastor. Yes. It's an interesting story. Yeah. These are wise men from the east, and I'm very sure they were wise men from the west, all and right. from the south, and from <laughs> all other directions. Sure. But what makes them unique, mm -hmm. these wise men, is that they follow a star. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I'm forced to think otherwise, my pastor. Mm -hmm. When we consider stars, mm -hmm. we have millions and billions of stars. Plenty plus. But they are saying we followed a star, a single star. Mm -hmm. How were they able to single out a star out of a million stars? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, to, to, to make matters worse, mm -hmm. stars are seen by everyone. They are. Even myself, even you, we see you that. see the stars. Mm -hmm. But if I ask you what's unique about a certain star, you might not see it. Sure. So I, I think somehow these wise men, they, had, they, they were doing a specialty in, in stars. Okay. Their study or their area of speciality was studying the stars mm -hmm. to such an extent that whenever there was a new star they would notice that okay. there is a new star All right sure. and this time around they are seeing a star mm -hmm. and upon seeing that star when they reach their destination yes they say we have come to worship him for we have seen the star <laughs> sure sure yeah. now uh, the, they were careful um, in their study yes. of, of the stars up until yes. they saw this unique, this different star. The star, yes, yes. Now, there was something that was different that they saw in the star. In the star, yes. And up until they followed it because of its difference, its uniqueness. Yes, yes, yes. They followed the star. Yes. You know, um, this reminds me of um, the time we're living in. Yes. You know, this was his star his star exactly and um jesus gave us signs of his coming of his coming yes and these could be our stars today yes and you and i must need to see the difference in the signs that we're seeing because if you follow these signs mm -hmm. the salvation is not in the signs themselves yes but they should lead us to the savior of the world yes, yes. so these signs must point us to a jesus who is coming mm -hmm. because their sign or their star led them to the jesus, jesus. who had come yes yes so the things that are happening today my pastor yes that we can take lightly yes these deadly diseases that we're having today yes the earthquakes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. signs in the stars, signs in the sky, everywhere. Everywhere, yes. Something unique and something different is about to happen. It's about to happen, yes. And they followed the star up until they saw the star. Maybe let's bring our viewers home. Oh, sure. We, we considered stars being many, and we also have a shooting star. I think this is common mm -hmm. with all of us. Yeah. They could have easily followed the shooting star. Mm -hmm. But this one, it was a moving, and there was a time when it stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, passing by Herod's place, that star stopped, yeah. and then it came out again. Yes. And they followed it until they reached Jesus. I, I, I want our, our viewers to understand that in as much as the stars were many, there was one unique star. Mm -hmm. yes. Taking it home, we have many, many churches. All right. All we right. have many churches. But the question is, are we in the right in the right one okay. or are we following the correct star or we are just following any star you know there are people who are confused my pastor mm -hmm. whenever they see a star they follow another one star comes they follow mm -hmm. another one come and they follow but these ones they were not like that right. they followed one single star mm -hmm. even when it led them to herod they they still followed that star so probably sometimes we might see yes. as if the church is going astray. Probably okay, okay. it's via Herod, but we are going to the master. All right. Okay. Mm. So this started to pass through the palace. Yes. All right. So we can, um, as a church, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, as the star that is there, yes. we, we, we have to be different. We have to be different, yes. From the world in order for us to be seen. Yes. Maybe, maybe before you, you, you go further, my mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. the star passed by the palace, yes. but that is not where the king was. Okay. That is not where <laughs> the king was. All right. All right. All right. When they reached the destination, uh -huh. they say, 
we have seen the king of the Jews yes. and we have come to worship him. But they passed by the palace where there where, was a king. Where there was a king. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that's another subject. Yeah, that's another it's subject. Music for another day. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. Music for another day. Mm. Now, there's one thing, my pastor, I want us to consider. Yes. You talked about them now in Jerusalem. Yes. Them now in the palace of um, uh, King Herod. Yes. Now, if um, you, you read carefully and uh, mm -hmm. slowly, yes. Uh, the, the whole city mm -hmm. was troubled. Yes. Because this gentleman came and said, you know what, we, we have seen this star. We have seen this star. I want to believe to their amazement, my pastor. Mm -hmm. They were so excited about the star. Yes. But when they got into Jerusalem, it was business as usual. It was a disappointment. It was a disappointment. Yes. Man, you, you are just seated. Mm -hmm. what, what, we saw his star. We saw his star, yes. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And people were worried and um, they, they were perplexed. Yes. Up until the gentlemen were taken to the palace. Yes. I'm saying, if we maybe put um, enough diligence yes. to the study of the stars of today. Yes. Diligence in the study of uh, the signs that Jesus gave us today. Yes. Even the whole world can be a stay. Yes. The whole world can come together and ask what's happening. What's happening, yes, yes. But since we are not so much into the signs and into the word that Jesus gave us, gave us. Yes, yes, yes. So you see that no one is, is being perplexed, and no one is being touched, no one is being taken to, to study. Yes. You know, when, um, when they got into Jerusalem yes. with their message of their star, single star, one star, yes. the scribes were asked, what is written in the law? In the law, yes. What is written in the books? Yes. Then they said, ah, you know what, ah, they're opening the pages, oh, it's written here by Micah. Mm -hmm. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem yes. So if we do diligence yes. to the study of the word of God and to the proclamation of his coming, yes. everyone will be put to study, everyone will be taken back to scripture. Yes. And these ones following simply a star, the whole city. You, you, you know what, my pastor. Yes. Jerusalem is not an, is an extraordinary city. Talk to me. Why am I saying so? Mm -hmm. It is a city which had all the wisdom and the knowledge of the coming of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had the, the libraries that pointed them to the Messiah. Yes. They had the books, they had the religion, <laughs> they had everything that pointed them to notice the star. Mm -hmm. But these wise men are from the East. What do they know? They only know stars. No, no library. No library. No scribes. Actually, these are heading ship. Mm -hmm. they they are. Remember, they left the ship. When they saw the star, they said, of course, we have this ship. We have these donkeys. We have these animals. Let's leave them and follow the star. Yes. But alas, in Jerusalem, where they, they have the star in person, Man. not the star on the sky, Man. but the star in person, and the information about the star, they are reluctant about it. I, I, I think it's a challenge to our church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know, my pastor, mm -hmm. our church is known by outsiders as a church of readers. Yeah. yeah. Many people would say, if you want to go to a church that reads, go to the Adventist, go to the Adventist church. That's what they are seeing. But the question is, are we readers? Mm -hmm. Or it's just the repetition that we read? Yes, and many who are following the star into our denomination, <laughs> they get so disappointed. Oh, if uh, my pastor will make a careful study, yes, in our church system, mm -hmm. it seems those who are seeing the star yes. and coming into the church, mm -hmm. they have become more readers than we who were born within the church. Mm -hmm. Why? We have stayed and become too familiar with the star <laughs> to such an extent that we have forgotten the value of the star. Hey, hey. And it's, um, it's one of those disturbing things. It's, it's one of those disturbing things. Maybe let me just take you to, mm -hmm. uh, to my grade one teacher, sure, sure. grade one teacher, Ku Gwenzi. Yes. Somewhere deep in Midlands. Yeah. We would enjoy it when our teacher would put a star. Okay. It was a disappointment. To have 10 out of 10. And there's no star. And there's no star. <laughs> it meant something. It, it meant something. 
it gave us the value even when we got home would even tell uh, retell the story to our parents that I, I have a star in my book mm -hmm. i now have 10 stars i now have 15 stars and we'll be comparing uh, with others mm -hmm. how many okay. stars we have all right. all right their significance was success okay but here we are talking of a star which is pointing us to salvation to salvation man yeah man now <laughs> You just you just reminded me of something. Mm. Um, now now that we 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 have these or stars, yes, the, they must not be shining only in our books. Yes, yes, they must sh start shining in our lives. Yes, we 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 must need be same ones in shoes. Exactly, exactly. Not only these ones on the pulpit. On the pulpit, yes. Now I I'll, I'll come to Francis of Assisi. Yes, yes. He is a power, one of the powerful quotations mm -hmm. saying. Preach the word of God okay. everywhere you go. Yes. And when necessary, mm -hmm. use words. Use words. Okay. Use words when necessary. When necessary. Okay. So okay. you preach the word of God everywhere you everywhere go. Everywhere you go, yes, yes. But when it's necessary, only when it's necessary. Yes. Then use words. Use words. So how was I preaching all this while? Okay. Through my lifestyle. Yes. So you and I need to be the stars that are shining, not only in the books that Pastor P is talking about. Yes, yes. But shining in our lives. In our lives, yes, yes. To bring many to salvation. To salvation, yes. So these gentlemen came following a star mm -hmm. up until they saw Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can people follow you? Can people follow what you do and end up at the feet of Jesus? Yes, yes. That's a million dollar question. Yes. I don't know, what Pastor, do we have anything before we, we wrap it up? Maybe let me just say, mm. uh, this star did not originate in Jerusalem. Yes. But the Savior was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It originated outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We are talking about gathered for worship. Yes. And scattered for service. For service. The star is, is resembling what is in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. People out there need to see a resemblance of what we go to church to do. Okay, okay. We spend our days in church from 9 to 4 p.m. <laughs> we're in church. The whole, day. the whole day we do our Friday Vespers, our midweek prayer. We are there. Mm -hmm. That's in Jerusalem. Okay. But okay. the question is, when we go to Judea, our workplaces, okay. when we visit our families, our relatives, in school, in school are they compelled to follow us back to Jerusalem? To see the real person, to, the real, the, to see what is changing us, yes. what is challenging our dressing, mm -hmm. what is challenging our language, what mm -hmm. is challenging what we eat and what we do not eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these things must lead people. Must lead people. That's service. Yes. The reason we do service, my pastor, mm -hmm. is so that the people who are not in service might come for worship. Amen. And after Amen. they come for worship, Amen. we take them out for service also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But some are so disappointed, my pastor, they come for worship and they are not charged to go out for, for service. service. And they are so disappointed. One year, two years, they are out of the church. They are. Because they are not seeing what the star led them to. Maybe the stars are there, my pastor. Yes. But they are dim. They are dim, very dim. They are, they are not shining. Yes. They are not as bright as they should be. I think COVID-19 has come at the right time. Talk to me. We are not going to church. All right. We are spending our days at home. Fine, we are going to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what, what, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. If we are not going to gather together and worship right. in the same place, mm -hmm. it means we should keep shining. Sure, wherever we are. Wherever we are. Remember, this star only disappeared when they had seen the Savior. So we should not be dimmed, we should not be dull until, until the people see the Savior. See the Savior. Yes. And Jesus is saying, as long as I'm lifted up, yes. I'll draw all men, men to unto me. myself. Yes, yes. My brothers and sisters, we are learning about um, the wise men from the East. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, uh, we are come to Jerusalem not because of the uh, temple in Jerusalem, yes. not because of the scribes nor the Pharisees, yes. not because of the palace, yes. but because mm -hmm. of the king who is born, yes. because we have seen his star. We have seen his star. Can it be spoken of us mm -hmm. that people would come Leaving everything else, yes. leaving um, maybe our music, yeah. forgetting maybe our lessons, yes. but saying, we have seen Jesus in you. Yes. Hey, my man. And Paul would safely say, mm -hmm. it is no longer I living, but Christ. but Christ in me. 
Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they had asked him, what is the secret behind the new pole that we are seeing? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, 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 no. It's not me. The star is now in me. In me? Yes. <laughs> I'm compelled to preach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but we thank God so much for yes. this uh, wonderful week of prayer that we had. Yes. Gathered for worship. And scattered for service. And scattered for service. Yes. Now, when we gather, we gather for one thing, uh, to worship God. Yes. And uh, it must not end there. Yes. Remember, we must serve. Everyone who is born in the kingdom of God is born as a missionary. Yes. Everyone who is born of God. Yes. As this hunger in him or in her mm. to call others unto salvation. Yes. What are the last remarks that you can give us, Pastor, before we, we wrap it up? Maybe just to say, since we are saying gathered for worship and scattered for service. Yes. Worship is one day, the seventh day. Okay. Six okay. days are for service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's make use of the days, of the days as they are designated by the, by the Savior. Yeah, sure. Let's shine out there. Mm -hmm. And when we come to our worship hall, yeah. because mm -hmm. now... It's more than 75 stars gathered together. Yay. The it's beams glorious. must be going outside to such an extent those who pass by, without even being cold, they should be attracted to the light that is inside. Sure. sure. I think I can safely say, say that. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much, my pastor. Yes. Um, my brothers and sisters, uh, we had a wonderful time together. We can make a difference. You and I can change the world. If yes. and only if we choose to do the right thing. God is willing to work within us, yes. with us, and for us. Yes. We should be willing to do his biddings. Yes. And remember, his biddings are his enablings. Yes. You qualify all those whom you have called. Yes. The Lord must now maybe anoint us yes. with his spirit and mm -hmm. pour his spirit within us mm -hmm. so that you and I must start to serve you know, our different callings, you know, our different giftings. Yes. My pastor, we can talk and talk and discuss. Yes. But I think we need to pray. Okay. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. We pray for the saints and uh, we, we call it quits. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Probably let me just pray with those who are saying, mm -hmm. pastors, we want to follow, we want to be the stars to be followed. Sure. We want the Savior to change us. Sure. We want uh, the people around us to experience the kind of a savior that we worship. Amen. I want to pray with, with those people. And maybe others were saying, Pastor, we have been shining stars, but along the way, Something the different. disappointments, the things that we met, they discouraged us from being the shining stars. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, Pastor, I want to be that star. I want to shine again. I want to be as bright as I used to be. Sure. We are tired of people who refer us back to whom they used to be I used to before the this. tragedies of this world. But it's, it's that time again where we should go out there and shine, mm -hmm. shine, and shine. The song that we used to sing as kindergartens, mm -hmm. let my little torches keep on shining and shining. And we are praying. Again. We are praying. Our Father who is in heaven, thank you so much for the week of prayer. It came at the right time to change and to challenge us. Mm -hmm. And yet, another lesson has come to us, teaching us about the star that led the wise men to you. Amen. We call upon you, Jesus, to come into our lives. Mm -hmm. We also, as the star, we want to bring many to you. The challenges and the tragedies of this world are many. Some have distorted our willingness to follow you mm. and some have even removed us of the shinings that we used to be mm. we call upon you father to attend to us we want to shine once again we want to shine even brighter than we used to do we want to shine so that the world out there might see the savior that we worship Amen. father be with us all our main aim is that we shine until we reach heaven amen. so that many might be drawn unto you in your name i always pray amen amen till we meet again may the lord bless you and keep you may he lift you up when you fall and the lord cause his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace blessings god bless you amen Beyond the sunset of blissful morning, when with our Savior heaven is begun, heaven is begun, and soiling ended, oh glorious dawning, beyond the sunset when day is done. Beyond
on the sunset, no clouds to guard them, no storms to threaten, no fears and no, no fears and no, no oh day of gladness, oh day unending, be on the sunset, eternal joy, be on the sunset, a hand to guide me, to God the Father, whom I adore, whom I adore, His glorious presence, His words of welcome, will be my portion on that fair shore. Beyond the sunset, oh glad reunion, when with our loved ones we'll weep no more, we'll weep no more in that fair homeland. We'll know no parting beyond the sunset forevermore. From the south, from the north, from the east, from the west, all is well. Safely Greetings and welcome to Arare City Centre Church. We welcome you once again to our series, Being True to the Body. We began by talking about New Start and talking about its benefit. We talked about nutrition, exercise and water. And with me today is Dr. Kwanda and we are discussing the start part of New Start. So today we'll start by talking about sleep. Welcome back, Dr. Kwanda. Thank Today you, so you are much. in full regalia for your work. <laughs> Welcome. And we want to start by talking about sleep. Why does it matter how many hours I sleep? Normally the best uh, time to sleep um, is dependent on age. The younger you are, the more sleep you need. Mm -hmm. And the older you are, so the range is around six to a maximum of nine hours okay. of sleep required. But for a normal adult, about six to eight hours are good enough. Okay. Yeah. People say in Shona, Kurara ho perugare. Meaning, don't spend too much time sleeping okay. because you won't get much achieved. But what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that we need to get sufficient sleep. Sufficient sleep. So, what is the relation between the hours of sleep that I get and how productive I am during the day? The norm is the uh, early to work, early to, uh, to bed, early to rise. Okay. catches the earliest, fattest worm. The fattest worm. Mm -hmm. So now we need to understand that the better your sleep pattern is, the better you are able to adopt to changes, to uh, stress, you are able to cope up with um, work demands and everything. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you are not lethargic, you are not um, needing more energy to do anything. Mm -hmm. You are um, aware you are m much awake, but if you are not sleeping enough, the tendency is y it's easy for you to make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. It's also easy for you to make mistakes. It's also easy for you to oversight or not be able to realize that you are, you are not doing something right. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to sleep, both for our minds, mm -hmm. both for productivity, and even for making money. Okay. Yeah. What is the direct relation to my health? Is it possible that from sleep deprivation I could get sick? It's very possible. Why? Because uh, our bodies have got a sleep cycle mm -hmm. and in this sleep cycle normally well before at least two hours before midnight our body is in repair mode. So what happens is the body has to repair the damaged cells and if you are awake during that time you are not repairing, you are not your body is not boosting its immune system. Your mechanisms, your storage mechanisms for your memory are not working properly. So you are actually affecting how the body repairs, how the body protects, and how the body defends uh, diseases. 
So 10 o'clock, we should at least it's try the best, that all of us are in bed. the best time to be in bed. Uh, I had one of the bad habits, I admit, I used to sleep after midnight. Until I realized that if you sleep at least two to a maximum of four hours before uh, midnight. midnight, you are actually getting double the amount in terms of sleep. If you sleep two hours, you're getting four hours oh. of sleep than oh. someone who sleeps after midnight. So someone who sleeps from 12 to 4 will actually uh, equate the amount of rest with, with someone who sleeps from 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. Oh, yeah. okay. What about waking up? We've just spoken about sleep. Is it important what time someone wakes up? It, some people are disturbed by different things, you know. Uh, some have prostate or kidney or bladder issues that disturbs them uh, and they often wake up to go and empty their bladders uh, in, in, the middle of the night. in the middle of the night. That affects sleep. But the norm is we should sleep and go through the three different sleep cycles so that we wake up having Thank rested you. enough. So undisturbed sleep should be at least, at least two to a maximum of six hours. <laughs> I'm just I'm thinking of the mother who's waking up every hour. That is normal. Um, you see, when the, when the mother is breastfeeding, mm -hmm. right, the advantages of women is during their childbearing years, mm -hmm. they are given extra hormones. They okay. have extra defense mechanism. God has wonderfully created us in a special way. That, that's why David says, I'm fearfully okay, and, and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Yes. And my soul knows that pretty well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because during childbearing uh, days stages, or stages, mm -hmm. women are so protected. It's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, it's also important to train the child not to wake up so often it's possible right um, so that you can sleep maybe two hours then you wake up two hours then you wake up okay yeah okay um, talk to us a bit about some of the sleep disorders that are there and the treatments that are that are available um, is snoring a sleep disorder Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the sleep disorders that are there? And what are the possible treatments? Or how can we make our sleeping patterns better? Okay. There are some people who suffer from what we call insomnia. That is mm. lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, it might be hormonal. Um, it might be due to stress. It might be due to uh, having been accustomed to night Sleeping. shifts. Mm -hmm. And um, they need to cope up right mm -hmm. so that they can go back to their normal routine normally the best way of treating sleep disorders mm -hmm. is to know their cause, cause. yeah mm -hmm. what is it caused by so how do we address mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and the norm is if you want to go get back to a normal routine of sleeping what you do is you go to bed early at a fixed time the first day is going to be hard because you'll be rolling in bed, mm -hmm. right? But make sure you are in a cool, uh, dark room. Switch off the light, tuck yourself in the blankets as it gets warm and, you know, it's dark, you generally like sleep. It. If it's difficult during the winter time, as is, take a hot shower or a, a hot bath. It will actually relax your nerves and you'll be able to be, to be sleeping in in a much shorter space of time than you are normally accustomed to do. You also need to make sure you are wearing warm clothes mm. during uh, the day. It, mm -hmm. It's important, especially when it's cold like this, to improve circulation around so that your body does not need to heat up certain portions of the body because they are so chilled or cold, right? So then the other thing, we need to set aside the cares of the day when you are going to the bed. We need to pray, meditate, you know, when you can relax. Avoid watching TV mm. when going to to the bed, to sleep. Right. Mm. Unless you have a sleeping disorder that requires you to watch, to watch television TV. so that you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different thing. Otherwise, blue screens will affect how you are sleeping. Okay, so I've heard the treatment, like mm. how we can sleep better. Mm. But please go a bit more into some of the sleep disorders. I heard you say something about insomnia. Mm -hmm. Is that the only 
the, so just order that. What okay. are some of the things? Like that the are ones they... that you mentioned, uh, like mm. uh, snoring. snoring. Yes. Um, okay, people sometimes need to understand that eating a heavy meal before bed is one of the most deadly things that you can do, mm. right? Um, the body needs to digest, and digestion takes at least thirty percent mm -hmm. of your energy right mm -hmm. so if you are taking 30 percent of your energy to digest mm -hmm. imagine what happens to your body when you need to rest you are not resting essentially okay you are actually um, needing to do some exercise unless maybe you are you do a night shift that requires you to do manual labor you can eat um in my culture they say if you don't eat with mandela it's either you are a witch mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know the Ma mandela was well known for eating around six and okay. you would eat a light meal yeah. for the evening and you know if you need to use energy much you then need to have eat a heavy more. meal yeah mm. but otherwise we need to eat light and we need to sleep at least three hours after our last meal okay. of the day what about sleepwalking what causes that uh, some people have uh, tendencies of sleep disturbances that are neurological mm -hmm. some are actually psychological what do i mean by neurological they are neurons uh, they miscommunicate and you know cause them. they cause that some are actually psychological they have got psychological challenges that causes these the sleep, uh, sleep sleep working disorders um generally in a black community we then say ah it's caused by witchcraft mm, yes, <laughs> right yes. uh, but you realize if we assist those people uh, to eat earlier make sure they're drinking sufficient water do their normal exercises and make sure they sleep in under conditions that are most suitable they will not sleepwalk mm. yes wow yeah. wow finally an in, um, interrupted sleep there are people who sleep but find themselves waking up often um, feeling restless or not sleepy anymore so maybe one could go to bed at nine wake up at 1 a.m and have a sister hope up to about 3 a.m and then that could happen for, you know, it's one thing if it happens for one night or two nights because you can say I'm stressed or I've got a lot of pressure. But when it's something that can go on for months on end, mm. what could possibly be the cause of that despite the stress? Okay. The, uh, the, the disadvantage that we have um, is when we, we are growing older, mm -hmm. we need to sleep, we are sleeping less and less as okay. we go. They actually say, when we are youthful like this, we mm. need to actually enjoy sleep. Okay. Why? Because as we grow older, we'll be sleeping less, mm. right? Mm -hmm. One, due to disturbances like you're mentioning. Mm. Two, due to the fact that our body is not regenerating that much, okay. right? Um, so how do we then solve it? Sometimes people then <laughs> need to use that time you know, for quality things like devotion, mm. you know, uh, play music that makes them sleep during that time. Where it's worst case scenarios, then you need to take something to assist you in what? In sleeping. Because in okay. there are some worst case scenarios where people just wake up after an hour of going to bed and the whole night they are awake. Mm. Then that needs medical intervention. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. I've heard of people who put white noises in their rooms mm -hmm. to, mostly for children but i think now with more of these sleep interruptions going on even older people have white noises as they are sleeping mm -hmm. is that something that's recommended or are we actually disturbing our children's sleeping patterns by putting that white noise in their room whilst they're sleeping um they it's 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 noticed that natural sounds are very good like waterfall mm -hmm. sounds nature mm -hmm. sounds piano you know things that are rhythmic they actually helps us to program our neurons and relax right mm -hmm. so you find if you're playing a plain piano you tend to be relaxed and you're not you know you're not going to do something very active during that quiet type of music so it's important as well to integrate these things in our what in our okay. sleeping patterns mm. when necessary okay all right where it's not necessary please don't just sleep because <laughs> <laughs> when you need it you it will not be it won't work working yeah okay 
um, I, something just came into my mind right now. What are some of the things that we can do to wind down, especially for those who find it difficult to, to sleep? Mm -hmm. um, others color before going to bed to calm themselves and to remove all the thoughts going through their minds. Others read a book, others take a shower, others even exercise before going to bed. What are some of the things that you would recommend are things that you can do between the time that you eat your supper? Let's say I eat my supper at sunset, which is around 5.36, and I intend to go to bed at 9.10. Between that time, what can I do that does not necessarily overstimulate my brain such that I fail to sleep? Okay. Um, most of the things you have already stated today, mm -hmm. you know, write your journal, mm -hmm. do devotion, uh, meditate if you... A meditator. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, read something, mm -hmm. right? They say a book is one of the best ways you can actually relax your mind or massage your mind with. Okay. Why? Because by watching something that you're not actively involved in, you're not exercising your, your, your brain cells. Okay. You actually go in a limbo. So you tend to be uh, so activated to the extent that you are not resting or relaxing. But if you are reading a book, it's, it's something that you're actively involving your mind but your body is so relaxed mm. and you can actually sleep reading a book. Right? Yeah. Uh, some things that you can do is drink um, herbal teas. They are teas that are known to assist the body Come to relax. Tea. Yeah, mm. chamomile tea is one of them. Mm. Lavender is another one. Mm. But don't drink these teas when you are going to work, eh? <laughs> <laughs> because you sleep. <laughs> Right. Um, then we, we can also take that time mm -hmm. to plan the day, the next day. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because we are now relaxed. We can actually audit what did I do during the day. We can. Some people take that time to do their accounts, personal accounts, or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. It also assists bedtime stories for mm -hmm. those with children or grandchildren. They mm -hmm. assist for lovers who are now alone in mm -hmm. the in, or who are alone at home. It's time that you can actually bond and connect, uh, and mm. connect you know, talk, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. relax. All right. Yeah. Um, I think the last question I want to ask you on sleeping is, does one's sleeping position really matter? Is there a recommended sleeping position <laughs> from, from the medical field? Do you say sleep on your left side or mm -hmm. sleep on your stomach? Or we encourage everyone for good breathing to sleep on their back is there a problem with our sleeping pat our sleeping positions yeah you said the best um, position to to sleep with is, is is it's recommended but however here's the deal amanda most of us we actually know our best sleeping position positions. that's true why that's because true. we've tried it and tested and then we say no 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 this works and this doesn't for mm -hmm. example there are times when you're told sleeping on your back is actually best right mm -hmm. then you notice ah, me for me to sleep on my back i need to support my back, this part mm -hmm. and stuff like that and you do that you're relaxed then some people will sleep on their tummy for the rest of their life yeah, and yeah. there's no problem right mm -hmm. so yes there will be recommendations but remember we are not one size fit all Mm -hmm. Not everything, everyone is the same size. Yeah. Okay? Uh, some have got a big belly and sleeping on their tummy is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And some, if, I, if they sleep on their side and mm -hmm. their hand or their leg is a problem, mm -hmm. we're actually inflicting pain instead of helping them to relax. Okay. So work with what is best suitable for, for you, you when it comes to sleeping. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. That was quite an interesting discussion on sleep. Uh, seeing that time permits us, let's go a little bit into temperance. Okay. So the T in New Start, the first T, mm -hmm. is for temperance. Mm -hmm. What is temperance? Um, I would define temperance in a very simplified manner. A temperance is when we use the good things moderately and we discard the bad things. Okay. Right. What do I mean by that? We cannot use a little bit of a dangerous thing because it's dangerous anyway. Mm. Right. Um, I've asked uh, people often who would like to smoke a little bit of cocaine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no no one. one. It's not good at all. Right. Mm. Even a little bit of alcohol, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So things that are dangerous to us, we need to discard them. 
Completely. And the things that are good, we need to use them moderately. Because mm -hmm. in as much as uh, it is good to drink water, but if you are now drinking 20 liters of water a day, that's extreme. Mm -hmm. You no longer have a place to put your good food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So everything that's good needs to be used moderately, mm -hmm. and everything that's bad needs to be totally discarded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is it important for us to exercise temperance in its many different forms? Shortly we'll speak about what exactly do we need to be temperate in, but why is it important for us to exercise temperance? What are the benefits of us being temperate? I remember, like I've mentioned, that uh, everything that's good needs to be used in moderation. moderation. Mm -hmm. And it helps us to live a balanced life. Right, if we exercise temperance. Imagine if your husband is not coming back home because he is working so hard at work, right? It means some other aspects of life are ignored, mm. right? So temperance also assists us to get the best of the benefits of the things that are good for us, right? For example, yes, exercise is good, but if we exercise, drink lots of water and eat healthy, now we have a combination. Mm -hmm. We compound the good effects of the things that we are doing okay. when we exercise temperance. And lastly, temperance is like a, 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 a holder of the good things okay. that holds it together, okay. right? How, what, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say if there was no temperance and you have all these good principles, you would find out that it's hard to maintain a balance okay. without temperance. Okay. And it's actually a virtue. It's one of those things that you only find as a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amongst the whole, <laughs> <laughs> amongst all the principles mm. of um, health, temperance is actually a fruit of the spirit. Of the spirit. Mm. So w we need it as a virtue mm. because it assists us to live even a good Christian life. Mm. Yeah. I think you explained it really well when you said that it helps us to have the balance of all the good things. So if I'm temperate in how much I work, it means I've also got time for my family, I've got time for leisure. Mm -hmm. And I think even in stewardship, in our 24 hours, mm -hmm. there's eight hours enough for me to have leisure, eight hours to go to work. The working day is eight hours long, mm -hmm. leaving me with 16 hours. 16 plus eight, exactly, mm -hmm. my maths is correct. Yeah. Leaving me with 16 hours to do anything else that I want to do. If I then want to use my eight hours of sleep, so I'm just mm -hmm. thinking about what we spoke about before. We spoke about sleep and we mm -hmm. said the average adult should get at least six to eight hours of sleep, mm -hmm. six to nine. Mm -hmm. If I get eight hours of sleep mm -hmm. and then I get eight hours of work, mm -hmm. it means I've got eight hours of leisure. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I would say I don't have enough time to do this and this and that. Mm -hmm. It's because I was not temperate yeah. in what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I had used my eight hours of leisure, mm -hmm. then I would have my eight hours of work. Mm -hmm. But once I'm starting to steal hours from all these other things, then I'm missing out on what I'm supposed to be yeah, doing. Enjoying your life. I'm not enjoying my life because mm -hmm. it's not balanced and I'm not being diligent. And God wants us to be diligent. Um, so what I was going to ask you next, what does the Bible say about temperance? <laughs> But <laughs> we already spoke the about Galatians, Galatians 5 verse 22, mm -hmm. which is the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, yeah. peace, yes. long-suffering, long gentleness, goodness, goodness faith, faith, meekness, yes. temperance. Yes. And then against such there is no law. Yes. So we need to be temperate. Mm -hmm. We really do need to be temperate. There is also Proverbs 16 verse 32. And it says, um, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. So I know that many times temperance is always spoken about in terms of what we eat. More than in terms of what we've spoken about sleep and the balance we always normally talk about now food. that face is deep <laughs> the one i just read right uh -huh. um most of the time we are focused on um on temperance in terms of um diet mm. exercise and everything mm. okay so let me take temperance to the level of problems mm. so the bible tells us that as a man thinketh so, so easy, easy. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now if you look at the bible 
from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. They are words that do not exist. Mm -hmm. And in my short time of reading and learning and studying the Bible in my life, I've learned that if something does not exist in Hebrew or in the Bible, mm -hmm. right, it's a bad idea. Okay. All right. So a very good example is the word can't mm -hmm. does not exist in the Bible, mm -hmm. being said by God. Okay. Right? It's a bad idea. Now, what am I saying? Most of us, we think negatively. Okay. And we build actions that are negative because mm -hmm. of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Then we build habits that, that are, are negative. negative because of our thoughts, thoughts words, mm -hmm. actions. actions. Then they build habits and our habits create our destiny. Mm -hmm. In other words, most of what we say we are not able to do, it's not because we are not really able to do. It's because we have thought so, mm -hmm. we have believed so, we have accepted so, we have spoken that way, and we, we become so. mm -hmm. the negativity. Mm -hmm. So you find it's easy. I, I actually try to inculcate this to my children, that you can't say can't. Mm -hmm. You because can. the Bible says I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say, if God tells us that this is a possibility, we, the only question that we should learn to ask is how, how can, can I, I do it? Do it? Mm -hmm. And give me the strength to do it. Exactly. And show me how to do it. Wonderful. Then on another note, we should inculcate in ourselves go to philippians uh, 4 verse 8 as we conclude we should make it a habit that we think on those things that are good that are of great report things that are faithful things that are things that make you happy mm. you, you need to focus your mind on those things right let mm. me give you an example uh, let's say um you get home and um Thieves have broken in mm. and stolen your, your precious things. Mm. Okay? Right. God forbid, though. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. What the Bible is trying to instruct us is we should learn the habit of finding good. Mm -hmm. Even amidst the bad things. things. Yeah. To the extent that, like Paul, who was in prison, right? In a dungeon, mm -hmm. secured with two soldiers right by his side, mm -hmm. and he was secured mm -hmm. to the chair that he was sitting in, mm -hmm. and he had no ability to get fresh air, sunlight, and everything. But you could say, Rejoice! In the Lord. And I say, Rejoice! Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we should find things to rejoice about mm -hmm. in the circumstances that we are in, we are in whether good or bad. Or bad. Mm -hmm. And that puts us in a in, in, I would say it's what puts us in the two percenters of the world. Mm. We are not disturbed by circumstances mm. because circumstances are going to continue being bad. Mm -hmm. right? I'm sorry to be a bearer of bad news, mm. but things are going to continue being bad until Christ comes. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to focus on the good consistently and constantly. Mm. Speak that, think that, believe that, do it. walk you in that, mm. do that. Mm. And it becomes our character that we are not disturbed by things, but we become blessings mm. through cases mm -hmm. and ladders mm -hmm. through challenges mm -hmm. and steps through obstacles mm -hmm. that we become the presence of God on earth, on earth. Mm, mm. Philippians 4 verse 8 finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there is any praise think on these things yeah. mm. okay interesting conversation we just had there but you are so right god is not glorified by a spirit of timidity and fear no. but rather as we read in galatians 5 verse 22 the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace mm. meekness mm -hmm. amongst all these things so today we've spoken about sleep we've spoken about temperance and we continue being true to the body and talking about new start when we come again we speak about air and rest, our rest, correct? Air and rest. 
So we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much and goodbye. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Lift up, 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 lift up. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up and never be sorry. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Well, you can talk about his worst conditions. You can talk about his world so far away. Lift up, you can state your views every day and every hour. up, I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up and never be sorry. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. I'm gonna lift up the name of Jesus. I'm gonna lift up the name of the Lord. Lift up, lift up his name every day and every hour. Lift up, I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Lift up, lift up, lift up. Lift up, 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 I'm gonna lift up his wonderful name. Why should you worry when Jesus says, come and I'll give you rest? Bring every burden and I set you free. Bring your burdens and come to me. Why should you worry when Jesus says, Come and I'll give you rest. Bring every burden and I'll set you free. Bring your burdens and come to me. Jesus calling, come unto me, come and I'll give you rest, bring every burden and I'll set you free, bring your burdens and come to me. He, Jesus calling, come unto me, come and I'll give you rest, bring burden and I set you free. Bring your burdens and come to me.